Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukaki, your host. Our heroes are battling deeper into the Wave Echo Caverns alongside their friend Ranger, seeking to defeat the evil Black Spider. Will they battle yet another wave of ghouls? Will they ever find the evil Black Spider? Will Butthole get over his obsession with dicks already? Find out next on Dum Dums and Dragons. At the last second you go, but wait a minute, I've never seen a ghoul's dick. And just that <laughs> amount of distraction. It's true. I'm going to have to ask Alan about it later. Yeah, I know. because it's, it's, Ranger, does this dick look like your dick? What is, is all Alan thinking about <laughs> dicks? <laughs> Alan was upset that she knew about elf genitalia. I, she's in team genitalia now. <laughs> Quinny, a warhammer comes swinging up past your face. You get the sense it was meant to be helpful, but... Let's finish this thing off with a plus one short sword. Total of 16. That'll hit. Sweet. Uh, Oh, nice, a six. You slide your short sword up under its neck, straight through the top of the head. See the undead light in its eyes go out. Fuck yeah. Does he ride it to the ground, like just a super awesome... And then like dust flies out? Oh, that's cool. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, slowly he sort of stands up and, you know, there's a a Michael Bay low telephoto shot with uh, the the burning pile of ghouls behind you. So I uh, light a cigarette. I reach (laughs) I reach into my backpack and I take out like a a metal cooking prong and I put some jerky on the end and then I hold it over the burning ghouls. I want to stop some food. That seems like such a bad idea. Do do not do that. Oh, no, I'm just doing this for show. (laughs) Okay. so I just cook the food over the ghouls who are burning. Can I eat it? I take it off, and I give it to Ranger. <laughs> Ranger is pleased. So I, I turn to Quinny, and I'm like, hey, Quinny, that was a pretty cool move you did there. Yeah. What, you, what, what do you think we should call that? Because originally I was calling it a dog's purpose, because I got Goblin Jr., and it's a wolf. Right. But when you do it, do you want it a different name, or do you just want it that's, maybe it'd be like a code word nobody would know. Like, I'd yell, a dog's purpose! <laughs> you'd run up and jump off my back and murder them. Honestly, if you, you it sounds like you could probably work a dog's purpose into more sentences than, like, <laughs> Do the kneel jump thing. So, yeah, I'll take I a dog. I would say do the bailey, but that's... Do the bailey. How about a baby's boom boom? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're small like a baby. <laughs> and the enemy goes boom boom because they're dead. <laughs> it works on multiple levels. Mm. So I think we're going to go with the dog's purpose. For now, anyway. <laughs> but we'll remember baby's can, boom boom. We can work on it. If dog's purpose ever gets too obvious for somebody, yeah. baby's boom boom will be our fallback code. Second tier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess we wait for the ghouls to burn out. <laughs> they do. It's horrible. It's <laughs> one of the worst sounds and smells you've ever encountered. But I'm, like, so fulfilled because I know Moonhammer, like, meant it to be. Also, I turned to Ranger just as the fire peters out, and I'm like, I'm so sorry this happened to so many of your brethren. So many rangers just lost in this cave. Their dicks didn't look like, like my dicks, so. Is that a dicks? ghoul thing, though? What? Your dicks? <laughs> my multiple dicks. Didn't you know this? <laughs> Okay, Alan, see, you really bury the lead if elves have multiple dicks. As far as I know, they don't. This is just me. This is a ranger thing. But they're rangers. Yes, but I'm ranger the ranger. (laughs) I have multiple dicks. I've never thought I'd be able to say this in my life, but I bet 10 gold pieces right now you don't have two dicks. Anybody else want to play? I don't want to play this game at all. Can you just show them so we can get this out of the way? I'm clamoring over the burnt corpses. (laughs) Well... (laughs) Roll a dice. Well, <laughs> he rolled a seventeen. What does he add to it? <laughs> Nothing. It was just a pure, just a pure roll. Uh, he's got two dicks. If you want two dicks, you've got two dicks. Oh my god! <laughs> I take out twenty gold and give it to him. I'm like, you're worth it, man. It's That's t- crazy. Ten for each dick. You One must- of the uh, dicks grabs onto the gold oh. like a baby's arm. Jesus! It's a baby's arm. Is it a literal baby? Does it have a hand? No, it's like it's more like a prehensile tail. So, oh, okay. I thought <laughs> only was... one of them is able to grasp things. The okay. other one's just a dick. The uh, other up one up to this yeah. point, Quinny's been taking like the "you're a halfling, you must be not well endowed" jokes. He's been taking those in stride. But if you have a dick the length and size of a baby's arm, Quinny's feeling a little intimidated. According by that. to the like things he's... we've said for a while, it's almost as big as Quinny. Yes, <laughs> one's the arm, one's the sword. Strike, <laughs> defend, <laughs> or grab and thrust. There's oh, grab so many and thrust! Ugh. Steal an apple. This is disgusting. God, steal an apple. 
Um, Alan, but, I hate your temple. Butthole is laughing. Why do you think I laughed? <laughs> this yeah, was no actually shit. from uh, a magical spell I had. Uh, Butthole uh, actually before. falls to the ground laughing until he's crying at this argument happening around him. And Goblin Jr. looks over, sees two dicks, opens his mouth, and then starts dog laughing, where it's like, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. and then he falls down laughing until he's crying, and we both just start farting uncontrollably. We can't hold back our thrills. Which I, I think brings us to a, a very important uh, a very important story. Tell us about this magical enchantment. I was a protector of the temple for a long while. We get a lot of runaways. One of the runaways dropped one of their books. I happened to read upon it, but... Due to my illiteracy, I read it wrong, <laughs> and now I am cursed slash blessed. Quinny looks around at the rest of the group and says, who the <laughs> fuck asked for that backstory? And, and, <laughs> and uh, Butthole writhing on the ground is like, it's a blessing. <laughs> it's definitely a blessing. I want to be clear, not my book. <laughs> Hashtag not Alan's book. <laughs> and then Butthole gets up immediately and he's like, what was the book called? Can you remember the spell? I'm uh, I'm asking for a friend. Uh, <laughs> Again, illiteracy, so most of it would just come out to goo goo gaju. <laughs> Butthole says goo goo gaju and then pulls out the front of his pants and looks down. No dice. Goo goo gaju. Oh, still no dice. Uh, you get the sense you might actually need this book in order to cast this uh, spell upon yourself. Where did you find this book? Who had this book? This was outside the temple, I told you. One no, of the runaways was... dropped it. They... So what did you do with it? Well, I made sense of it the best I knew how by spouting nonsense out of my mouth by trying to read what it said. Yep. Not doing well. Bam's your uncle. I grew an extra appendage, and then I just threw away the book. <laughs> 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 so it's just in the woods by the temple. Oh, most likely, yes. Alan, I know you don't want to go back to the temple, but I sort of do now. Do you know how much money we could make giving people two dicks? Tens of gold. Tens. You promised me we'd take care of the evil bastard that's trying to destroy oh, no, we're, the temple. We're doing that first. No, and I right. want to follow it up with multiple dicks. I'm in. Goblin Jr.'s in. Quinny. Definitely in. You do not so, speak for me. Alan might just, even want two dicks. There's no limitations. Just a suggestion, Ranger, why don't you take butthole back in my place? Fair trade? Not a fair trade. I'm sorry. Your mom would be pissed. Your mom's at the temple? Yeah. Does her mom know you have two dicks? How does that go over with women? I I'm don't just curious. want to hear this. <laughs> to be fair, never met her mom, but this is from the headmaster and, well, you know. Thumbs up. What? <laughs> is that We're the rating? We're talking about butts and uh, dicks. I'm just figuring thumbs. Just, and... No, but I was like, well, I guess, no, I don't want to go down that road. Uh, but just, Alan. do they like it? Like, do women Fun like hole. it or is it weird? Oh, we, oh, I've never had a night with a woman before in my life. <laughs> do men like it? Or I, do men think it's so weird? Quinny, you want to just check out the next room? I, yes, let's go right. up these stairs and leave Butthole I'm, and I'm Ranger two right dicks to so the conversation. Ranger, are, are you a virgin, Ranger? <laughs> I'm cursed by celibacy. Yes, I am. <laughs> was that from the same book or a different book? No, no, it's not an actual curse. This is the. This is what you take. This is uh, when you become a protector of the temple. You take a vow of celibacy. Is that why you're so focused? Because yes. I feel like it, just an orgasm I might just, do you some good. Wait, I just sit down cross-legged on the floor and start reading my books. I want to just delve a little further <laughs> into this. It's going to be so a while. When you say you're celibate, does that mean you can't have sex with other people or like masturbation's off the table? Oh, no, masturbation is prime. <laughs> Okay, you've got a dick that can wrap around things. Have you ever had one dick <laughs> wrap around your other dick? Y yes, we call that a twist knot. We? Yes, my two dicks. <laughs> one of what, them. <laughs> what are their names? Uh, Gavin and McLeod. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to be weird, but can I sketch them? Oh, you don't want to be weird? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm learning. This is for Moonhammer. Can I, can I draw you? Once we defeat ultimate evil, I will allow you to draw me, but not until that task is done. Okay, no more dicking around. We gotta fucking get this finished. Come on, Gavin. Come on, McLeod. <laughs> Somewhere, Gary Gygax, inventor of Dungeons and Dragons, his soul just exploded <laughs> in sadness and rage. Are you yeah. kidding me? His soul definitely has two <laughs> dicks. All right, let's 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 keep going. The ranger with dual wielding has two fucking dicks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's called a twist knot. I learned that a minute ago. So we head up to the, the, the room. Yep, so uh, let me That's tell you about this this giant room uh, de full of de the de Gould room. Yes, so Stipa escarpments divide this large cavern into three sections, high ledges on either end. You are currently in the west 
the mm-hmm. west one. Uh, two large st- tables stand in the middle section along with a pair of old braziers. Smaller table is on the eastern ledge, and you see the skeletal remains of dozens of warriors, dwarves, gnomes, orcs, and ogres. They attest to the fierceness of the fighting that took place here long ago. You get the sense that this was probably once a large banquet hall. Alan, are your arcane senses tingling? Let me check. Eight total? They are not. I got nothing. Well, now that we know we're safe, guys, we want to plan what have we been missing this whole time? A table. What do we have in the middle section? A table. Let's go make a planning table. After you. Okay, so I I walk down to the two tables in the middle section. Do you keep an eye on the skeletons as you do? Oh, of course. They do not move. Sick. I go right over to the table, and I'm like, come on, guys, we got to have a meeting. All right, it seems safe. Well, we're actually okay. using this to just plan stuff. Yeah, we got to figure out which one we're going to go through. we got three paths. We can go back yeah. out where we came in and keep going north. We can go north from the ones that's right by these tables, or we can go one more to the east and go in that way. What uh, are we feeling? While we're planning, I'm taking a quick uh, breather here with some healing dice. You also hear another impossibly loud boom, and uh, you feel the walls shake. Is it getting louder? It is. Okay, I'm thinking we might want to hurry up. So, Do we know where this boom is emanating from? I'm uh, trying to source it. Yeah, uh, roll me an insight check, please. Natural 20. It appears to be coming from the northeast. So the plan of action is to go towards the source of the emanating boom? Well, it's sort of our option is go towards the emanating boom where I'm imagining the source of all evil is, or just leave and, like, get sandwiches in Neverwinter. I like sandwiches. Let's finish this. Come on. No, I have to defeat this thing so I can draw you. Let's go. Let's go. Also, plan B, I just want to say this while we're at the table because I think it's worth discussing. If we have to fight two more ghouls, I think I know what we should call them. One should be called Robert, and the other should be called Ghoul A. And then we're totally set. Just so we know, the one on the left will be Robert and the other will be Goulet. Got it. All right, done. Let's keep going. So we, we go up this path to that's, the north. That's a good bit. That's a very good bit. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just naming ghouls. I love Quinny's dead eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I've rested up to uh, 25 out of 27 health points just to keep nice. the healers and the listeners in the know. This is like a, a really shitty Bob Ross podcast. It's like, oh, I'm just going to add a happy little chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Those Don't of you watching at home you can't see it, but it's real pretty. So does anybody else want to say anything before we venture away from the table? Now is the time for sharing plans, just how you're feeling. Gavin McLeod is actually named Alan Tudix. Do you know what? That's a that's a positive rewrite. Uh, I like it. I like it. So Alan Tudix is going to go... I don't like that go... my name is part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How do you spell Alan? Uh, how do you spell Alan? How do you spell Alan? <laughs> the way you spell Alan. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no winning. So I got to protect you. Uh, what? <laughs> excuse me. Oh, because you're named after his genitals. That's why you're a source. I am. He ab- can't let ha- Alan I die. I named myself, and I had no awareness of your genitals at so, that time. So, do you know no, what? Would you? Maybe, maybe Ogma helped you choose that name. So that you would be named after his dicks, and that's why he's here to protect you. It was nah. destiny. No, nah, I just named myself. That's actually what he named his butthole, Destiny. Oh? Uh, <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> Listen, I'm pretty in with Moonhammer. I know what's going on. She tells me things. Uh, and then Goblin Jr. like puts one paw on the table, and I'm like, yes, Goblin Jr., do you have a plan you want to put forth? And Goblin Jr.'s like, snarf, 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 snarf. <laughs> and I'm like... Agreed. And he just takes his paw off the table, uh, and we're, we're ready to go. <laughs> Hounds are smart. Wait, this one is, yeah. <laughs> is there anything else going on in this room besides the two tables and the brassiere? There's not. All right. I put on the brassiere. <laughs> the it's not brassier. that kind of brassiere. You're, you're on fire now. <laughs> it wasn't lit. I guess we didn't give that detail. No, okay, now so you're just like little Pim Pim, just wearing a wearing a, wearing a, pot. a pot. I take it off again. Okay. I don't want to work for that one. <clears throat> so we go into the next area. All right. Uh, in the next area, you see a blast furnace and a mechanical bellows powered by a water wheel, which dominate this large chamber. The furnace is cold and dark, but heaps of coal are piled nearby, along with carts full of unrefined ore. The water wheel sits in a 10-foot-wide channel cut into the floor of the room, but the channel is dry. Passages exit to the west, south, and east. You're standing in the the south exit. Okay. The empty channel exits to the north and east. More than a dozen withered corpses are scattered around the room. These slain dwarves and orcs are still wearing the remnants of their armor, and floating above them is a skull engulfed in green flame. (sighs) Damn it. Has it spotted us? Uh, It just appears to be floating in the middle of the room. 
Oh. It is looking in your direction, but it isn't doing anything. Okay, Alan, can you identify yeah, what that's yeah, doing? Can I do, I'm going to do an arcana check on this guy. 17 total. You've certainly heard about these. Flame skulls are often uh, summoned by sorcerers and given uh, express instructions. As a thief, I'm assuming it's a sentry. I would assume so, but I don't know because it might be. It could ask three riddles, and if you get them wrong, because sometimes people who set up sentries generally need a way through them at some point. Could be a red band situation. Um, yeah, yeah, Alan, uh, uh, you can roll me roll me a uh, further arcana check. Twenty total. You feel as though you could probably communicate with this thing if you wanted to. I think I can talk to this thing. Is it just you, or could we all talk? Is Excellent this like a banshee question. situation where we should just send Alan? Is this guy going to speak common? It's a, a wizard's familiar, so the odds of it talking to random people are pretty low. All right. It might just be a wizard thing, guys. I want to sneak off to get an angle on it. Okay. So he'll sneak off to get an angle. We'll stay where we are. I'm, I'm going to stick with the blue flame. I'm you ready for that. You got your bow. Echo. I'm readying my bow. Right uh, his fat face. Alan, do you want Goblin Jr. to go with you? Because he might be able to tackle somebody to get you out of there if it goes bad fast. Yeah, sure. All right, so I'll send Goblin Goblin Jr. up with that. You can play familiar. And that was another big rumble that we just got hit with. That's why we got to go, because I'm like, if we can get through this passage at the end of the room, it's going north. We'll go right through that fucking passage. We got to move. So I'll circle all the way back, go through the room with the tables, and uh, come up through the other entrance. So we're at the two entrances that come from that center room. Okay, so um, Quinny, uh, our camera's going to follow you uh, as you go back into that central room. Uh, Can you roll me a perception check, please? Uh, 15. As you come back into the room, you're a little bit on guard. It feels like something may have shifted in the room. You look around. Um, it doesn't look like the skeletons have moved at all, but um, they're certainly sort of weighing on you. I yell back. and like, guys, something's weird going on with these skeletons. Then just come back here. Don't d- d- listen. You can do it every but come back here. Don't touch them. Touching them is a bad idea. No, I, I do not care now for your safety, but I do care a lot about my own. Come back here now. All right. So I um, come back to the party. As you go, you suddenly feel something very slick and sticky slap against your leg. Mm-hmm. It uh, it doesn't manage to uh, to hold you, but uh, as you look down, you see a, a large oozing slime start to form. I shout out, "Rock slime!" Uh, and um, I want to use my uh, boots of striding and springing to leap away from the slime. Okay, uh, yeah, get as so. much distance as I can. For my jump, that's 28 feet. <laughs> uh, now, which way do you want to jump? Do you want to jump back towards them or towards the other door? Uh, right, right now, Guy <laughs> is holding out his arms and rocking them like a baby. So I think his character is supposed to be doing that. I'm going to jump <laughs> up It's an audio on top medium. You've got to say things. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. So, uh, yeah, you leap up onto the table. You can also leap up if you would prefer to one of these two raised uh, sure i'll go up to the raised area so you leap up there the slime is following but uh, as soon as like your big sort of thundering footsteps happen um, you can see it start to like slide away so it slams up against a crack in the wall and just kind of oozes through it and disappears so back to plan for positioning ourselves yeah. great and let's be on guard because if this is a familiar then well i'm already on guard for more slimes now i'm like yeah. watching where i step i i, I, say, I wh- whoever's in control of the familiar is probably going to be able to see us too and and know whatever it's familiar knows. So, so. Goblin Jr. is going to go with you. I'm going to, yep. I'm, I'm readying a blue flame. Like I, I build up the fart and it's right at the end. So I'm sort of like the fart equivalent of like a uh, turtle head in it where it's just oh. like, it's a little bit out, a little bit in. <laughs> oh, and I keep feeding more gas in to just keep it ready to go. And the Warhammer is like sparking just a little <laughs> bit, like almost invisibly. It's because a little bit of the gas escapes because there's so much pressure, but I keep creating more gas that it's ready to launch at a moment's notice. It's like a hair trigger situation, but it's limited by your body. Great. So, um, <laughs> Quinny, you've uh, you've moved around to flank. Alan, you think you can communicate. Ranger, mm-hmm. what are you doing? I'm ready my bow. Uh, Alan, what would you like to say or, or do? So I'm just going to walk very casually up to the skull, just like I belong here. Okay. As like there's as- no reason why I why I shouldn't be here. <laughs> Okay, so the skull um, locks its uh, sort of the gaping holes where its eyes should be on you and uh, says, what is your business here? Uh, So don't want any trouble. Uh, Just looking for uh, one of our dwarf friends. You know of any dwarves in here? The dwarves have all died. They have all fallen. All have fallen. There's not not even one left. (laughs) (laughs) The forge must be protected. That is what Master said. And it starts to glow like the flame starts to intensify. Mm-hmm. Um, just for curiosity's sake, who's, oh, no. who's your master? <laughs> Roll me uh Well, you tell me. Do you want to use persuasion, intimidation? I want to use an innocence. <laughs> just like, hey. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Gotta be persuasion then. I guess, yeah. I guess it's persuasion, yeah. 16 total. It seems to regard you 
with a curious look, but um, after pausing for a moment or two, it seems to kind of almost nod to itself. It says, you are not with the Dark One. I... Yes, yes I am. We are with the Black Spider. The Black Spider brings naught but destruction and pestilence unto oh, this space. Shit. Back, backtrack, backtrack. backtrack. This one bursts into green and the, uh, the withered corpses at his feet start to stand. Roll initiative. Whoops. Uh, seven. Fourteen. One. Two. I look over to the rest of the group as the skeletons start scrambling to their feet and I just yell... If we kill the skull first, it might shut everybody else down. I have yeah, no maybe. evidence to support this. I'm noting that. But if it made him get up, it might be able to make him go back down. Are we still unable to reason with this skull? I mean, I guess we can try for like your combat turn. Try talking to it. Do you want to try hugging it? That plan went really well, well last time. Is there anything you want me to say to it? <laughs> I would say do a piece of evil magic to show him that you are the Dark One. Well, he said you're not with the Dark One, though, and yeah. it's a familiar, so the Dark One probably created it. I take back what <laughs> I said. Oh, don't take it back. you got to own it. It's, do you know what? Some great ideas have come out of today. How would we know you had two dicks if we didn't follow down these thoughts? You're right. <laughs> I had pause, but now I go straight for the jugular. Do some evil magic. Impress the skull. <laughs> the zombies begin to rise beneath the, uh, the flame skull. The flame skull locks eyes with Alan... And uh, two of the zombies uh, that just stood begin shuffling towards her. Ranger, you're up. Mighty Skull, I know not these evil boglins next to me. (laughs) What I do know is evil. And I see that you are evil and serve the Dark Master. May I do something that would earn your trust? Like what? If I were to cut off one of my dicks... (laughs) To give to you, would you call off this attack? Wait, you have two dicks. Yes. No, wait, make him bet about it. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, sh- he'll show you he has two dicks. If, if he does, we get to go through. Given that I just rolled a one for the flame skull, this I must see. <laughs> Amazing. Oh show God. him your dicks. Show him your dicks. All right. Here goes the magic. from a realm of hell and never have I seen something so impressive. Surely one as well endowed as you cannot serve the black spider. He must be destroyed. I, I mean, oi. Well, uh, I don't even know where to go from here. No, we're good. We're good. The skull's on our side. Let's just stay quiet. Somehow Ranger's crushing this. Uh, Well, most well endowed one, you must be a uh, a compatriot of uh, the great sorcerer, Mormensk. Only he could help endow someone that well. My master will be greatly excited to see you. Will you take us too, master? Oh, I must protect the forge, but I suppose I could leave my zombie horde here to do that for me. Sounds great. Uh, yeah, so in a highly uh, improbable turn of events, the skull, so impressed by your second dick, agrees to lead you to uh, the last known location of his master. What is happening? Listen, and I, I, as as we're following, I like put one hand on Ranger's shoulder and I just take his hand in the other and just shake it like so goddamn proud and impressed. For me, it's like I'm shaking hands with the president. Like it is a big deal. Two, uh, two points of order here. One, Flame Skull rolled one, so that's the only reason this is happening. Two, really didn't need to spend those minutes coming up with the initiative order for all those fucking zombies. (laughs) Forward! (laughs) Oi, you all owe me some mead. Yep. All right. (laughs) Your dick's already holding 20 gold pieces for me, so it's a good day. I gave a man's dick some money. We didn't have to fight those zombies. We're going to go work for a dark master. This, nothing can go wrong. What Except we didn't make okay, this money. remember, we don't want this forge to reopen. Well, he just said protect it. He didn't say fire it up. They, they might actually right. just be trying to prevent just, people from wanna, getting to the forge. I just want to be sure that we're all on the same page of what our goal so, is. Yes, so. our goal is to work with the dark master. So the skull... Um, Wink. As Wink. You, uh, I'm not saying that. The skull can see us. So uh, it explains that uh, it was it's one of the last uh, the last defenses uh, left for the forge after the the, the great fight that uh, that cost so many. 
He is, however, very excited that uh, Mormansk uh, is, is is still still around and kicking. Uh, however, um, he's greatly disturbed by the presence of uh, the Black Spider and his minions. Who are uh, who have invaded the mine? He said he's been mostly anyone. successful yeah. at holding the uh, holding the uh, bugbears, goblins, and invaders at bay, but uh, the black spider's presence in the forge is of great concern. Yeah, we hate that guy. Like any way we can help you take that black spider out, we're in. He's a real problem for us too. Will you lend us your dark strength to take on this dark abomination? Uh, or will your master, perhaps, if it's not your strength to really promise, like, could you do, like, an introduction where you're like, these guys are cool, I met them, like, we hung out. or we're an easy lay. <laughs> He's celibate, though, so he'll, no, ma- he'll masturbate I'm nearby. very easy, though. <laughs> <laughs> if he can defeat the ultimate evil, he'll fuck a lot of things. <laughs> Two things. It leads you into a room that's filled with glittering minerals in the ceiling. It's a large cavern, and the minerals catch the light and send it back to create the impression of a starry night sky. Dozens of skeletons, many crushed under falling debris, are scattered across the floor. The cage is large enough that it contains two freestanding structures. Each of these stone buildings is uh, proportioned for human use as opposed to the dwarf-sized doorways and furnishings you've seen elsewhere in the mines. Both structures have battered and blackened masonry walls, their double doors cracked and scorched. The cavern is divided by an escarpment into which a flight of stairs has been cut. Passages lead out of this area to the north, south, and west. The skull is bringing, uh, is leading you down the stairs, and it kind of shoots a kind of a, a nervous glance at this first structure that you're passing, which is the uh, the northmost one. Uh, as you come down into the bottom, uh, the bottom of the escarpment uh, around the corner, you can see the the faint glow of the fungi. Alan, can you please roll me an Arcana check? Yeah. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> You can feel lots of magic, more so to the north, less so to the south. Uh, also, the, there's another boom, and it is much, much, much closer. All right, let's let's okay. let's keep going. So it brings you to the southern building, um, and it uh, speaks, uh, speaks to the door and says, Master, open up. The uh, the large doors, uh, the skull says it uh, says that into them, um, but you notice that the doors uh, look to be stuck. Uh, they seem to be almost uh, partially melted, um, and hinged together. So you feel like you could probably force it, but they don't seem to open of their own accord. I looked at the skull, and I'm like, does he open these doors? I have not seen the master in years and years. Wait, how long were you waiting in that place we found you? There is no light or time down here. Is your master a vampire? No, not last I checked. Years and years and years and years and years ago. But, but is he still giving you instructions? The master instructed me to guard the forge. I've been guarding the forge. Guarding against the black spider. Well, this was informative. Let's open up the door anyways. Yeah, I'm going to push. So I, I'll, I'll assist uh, Ranger Ranger here uh, and, and help try to do Just want to roll me a strength check to force the door? Yeah, let's do this. I got a grand total of six... Five. Neither of you opened the door. All right. Do you know what? I'm going to give this one a... Do you know what? We started too close. We got to go further back. We're going to yeah. run across the room and go like full body shoulder into it, but simultaneously. So there goes. Three, two, one, run. Fourteen. And I got eight. Butthole, you kind of missed the door and hit the wall. Um, <laughs> But, uh, Ranger, you feel the doors give way and, and crunch under your shoulder, and they split apart. I stagger back to the wall, mildly dazed, and I'm like, see, it, it took both of us, or he would have missed. <laughs> Inside, you see dust, ash, and walls blackened by fire, and heaps of debris beneath the sagging ceiling show this room was damaged by a destructive blast. The furnishing, tables, chairs, bookshelves, and beds are char- charred or splintered, but otherwise well-preserved. There's a scorched iron chest near the foot of one of the beds. Maybe the master's in here. I'll take a look. All right, we all go look to see if the master's hiding in this box. Wait, the master's in the chest? Listen, we don't know, but we're going to find out. Alan, Um, do you want to search the room magically? There might be something hidden in here if it's a wizard's place. Yeah, can I do an arcana check? Sure. 22 total. Uh, You can definitely feel the presence of an incredibly strong magical force. The skull says, Master, I have brought helpers. One of them has two dicks. (laughs) <laughs> and sort of a uh, spectral form begins to to form above the uh, f- floating a few feet above the iron chest. All right, Goblin Junior starts to bow to it. I just stand, like I signal him to do that. So uh, it looks upon you, and specifically looks upon Quinny, and says, "Mortals, my treasures are mine alone, and not yours to plunder." Who's plundering? We we thought Who, you might- me. 
Listen, I don't want to make him sound like an idiot, but he thought you might be in the box. Oh, no, stay out of the box, and we will get along just fine. Now, my faithful skull tells me you have come to assist me. Are you here to deal with that accursed spectator? Uh, If you're talking about the black spider, hell yes, we hate that guy. Ah, the black spider troubles me, but less so than that accursed beast. This forge of spells has been long held for me by a creature summoned by one of my fellow wizards back during our defense of the mines. A spectator. A spectator? The creature is a spectator? It is known as a spectator. Is, is, that, it, is that what's making the banging sound? He laughs and he looks at the skull and the skull's like, uh, yes, also laughing. Um, <laughs> he says, no, there is a natural... Uh, the cave... Ah, fuck, oh, is that the it? echo? Where do they say wave echo cavern? It surely is. Ah, oh, man. We the were really worried from about below that. strike up and cause the thunderous booms that no doubt you've heard. Wait, what? Oh, there's an ancient waterway beneath these mines, the waves of which slap up against the oh. caves and cause the booming echoes you may have heard. What about that? And I point uh, out through the doorway, hopefully getting them to look over there because I want to try and open the chest. Do you roll me a persuasion check there, Quinny? <laughs> Nat 20. Mormansk, uh, rather than just looking, immediately like disappears and reappears outside. Mm-hmm. And yells like, you cannot come to plunder my goods. He's outside. Slight of hand, like yeah. crazy. 14. So um, the chest pops open without any real difficulty. It seems okay. he, uh, he guards it rather than keeping it locked. Mm-hmm. Inside you find um, 1,100 copper pieces, 160 silver pieces, 50 EP, and so 25 gold pieces, three diamonds worth 100 gold pieces each, and a wooden pipe adorned with a, a platinum filigree. I'm going to try and grab it all. Given that you distracted him so handily, he's still outside. I'm going to, can I talk with the Dark Master? Mm Mm-hmm. Oi, Dark Master. It was me who summoned your little skull buddy. I wanted to see you face to face and show you this. He takes off his trousers, his mighty two dongles. Wait a minute. (laughs) I've seen this enchantment before. How did you find the Wispo Two Dicks? A long-lost tome. It was in the forest outside of the keep I was guarding, where this one, he points to Alan, was running away from. However did they come upon such a tome, he says, as Quinny is, like, filling his (laughs) bags. Well, Alan? Well, it wasn't mine. Well done. I (laughs) don't know. What I do know is... The place I guard is full of knowledge, full of wisdom, full of tomes of epic proportions. That does all sound very good. Perhaps with such power we could help each other out. For you see, I have but one thing I truly value. Much of it I'd be willing to part with if you could help me get into the Forge of Spells. So, hey, Dark Master, just wanted to join this conversation. Uh, what do you want to do with the Forge? Like, what's, what's the game plan once you're done? I will never be done. Okay, what's the game plan once you start and are in the middle? (laughs) Me and my brethren died protecting this fool's errand from orcish invaders generations ago. But I have persisted, and once I find my way back into this world, oh, the wonders I shall bring. Yeah, well, uh, do you know what? A lot of people have different versions of wonders. Some people like gold. Some people like hugs. Some people like a world full of corpses they can control. Like, what's what's your uh, version of wonders? Where, where's wonderful for you? Well, I seem to have more than enough corpses to control down here. Oh, no, you're crushing it. No question. Ah, thank you. Yes, crushing it. Hmm. Uh, once I am free of my... Once I've harnessed the power of the Forge of Spells, I will be able to return to this astral plane and walk the daylight once again. So you want to just, like, have a body and hang out? Well, yes, perhaps some some minor conquering and ruling in there, but yes, mostly just to return to the earthly realm and experience time once again. Listen, I'm the guy who likes details. I just want to focus on a small part of that where you said maybe some minor ruling and conquering. Who are you you conquering Uh, and why? I'm cool with conquering. That's a thing. Well, listen, you mortals seem to have gone through quite a lot. Don't you feel like a lot of people who are less intelligent than you are often sending you on quests? Do you know what? This guy makes a lot of sense to me. (laughs) Don't Uh, I, though? A, a, a world, perhaps a world where your friend with two dicks would be looked upon as the marvel he is. Oh, man, that would make a lot of sense. In a mirror, I already am. So I'm like, listen, I'm a pretty good judge of character. Mm. So what I gotta ask you is, are you a hero or a villain? And then I do like a crazy look at him where he's, I want to know his immediate reaction. 
with like a perception check. Sure. Roll me a persuasion check. That's a critical <laughs> fail. It's a one. He just laughs. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Well, how about I ask you a question? Hero yes. villain! <laughs> Eight. <laughs> In his own time, a man may be both hero and a villain, but I grow tired of these conversations. Will you assist me with my dilemma or not? Uh, I think the question that I've got to ask as a former mercenary, uh, I don't want to be a, a dick, your ghost ship, but uh, like, what's, what's in it for us outside of just helping you conquer and rule? Well, roll me a stealth check, please, Quinny. Well, I have a chest full of riches. Nine. And he turns, and he sees Quinny, <laughs> chest open, handful of jewels. Now, Quinny, here's a real question for you. You took everything in there except for the copper. Yeah. Suddenly, like, the wraith appears directly over top of the chest. Mm -hmm. Just says, you took it, how could you? And he reaches into you. Mm -hmm. And uh, roll initiative. Eleven. Fifteen. Five. Fifteen! Good news, guys. You get to fight the flame skull after all. <laughs> well, that really well, comes down have an to army. your definition of good news or how long it takes zombies to walk here for the no army Quinny. <laughs> you think this is my fault? Oh, oh no, it's my fault. I fucked this one up. Oh, thank you. Quinny, uh, it has reached inside you. Mm -hmm. You feel uh, chills shoot through your body. You're going to take uh, seven points of damage. Cool. Uh, and you must throw me a constitution save. Ten. You know, you know, you you've had a you've had a, a rough life. You've had a, a mixed, a bunch of mixed experiences, but uh, you never uh, found your your very soul touched by uh, an undead force before. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can feel your very essence drain out of you, and you find your uh, maximum hit points are reduced by seven. Okay. I hate you so much, Quinny. Oh yeah, all the bad things are happening to you hate right you now. So much. No, because now we have to kill it. I gotta heal you. You're gonna just take so much out of me. Can I just show my two dicks again? The time Realistically, for we had to kill this guy anyways. Alan, can you just 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 focus on one thing at a time? I, no, I'm just saying we haven't been focusing on our main objective Have here. Have you noticed which is how good we, prevent the forge from being reopened? I just want to point out. A, we're helping dwarves open the forge, so the forge gets open no matter how this plays out. Yeah, but not B, by this guy. Do you remember how good we were at the traps with the ghouls where we didn't fight 20 ghouls because we took like three steps and then we got to kill them in a way where nobody got hurt? Yeah, whose plan was that? That was my plan. Uh, uh, listen, you opened with, was I've got Queenie's some fire, plan. but I pumped it up so it was great. <laughs> oh man, if I wasn't having my soul pulled out right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If you weren't having your soul pulled out right now, we wouldn't need to have this conversation. No, and I'd be rich. Or, <laughs> or, or, or. <laughs> Listen, we're going to have a long talk when this is over. Quinny, you stupid fuck. <laughs> out, of the, uh, out of the skull's mouth come uh, some very familiar looking darts, some kind of magic missiles, if you will. Uh, fuck. Uh, so three points to Quinny, one point to Alan. Oh, and I am totally uh, reacting with my shield, using my staff of defense. Great. Blast that right off. So just and uh, four points to Ranger. Good call, Alan. Good thing I looked that up yeah. at the last break. <laughs> The skull cries, lies, all lies, and I told you so much about the cave before. Quinny. I lean over to Ranger who's standing beside me, and I'm like, if we don't kill that skull, we're going to have a lot of zombies coming around the corner in a minute. Oh, you think what I'm thinking? Yes. Baby boom. <laughs> I think he's already getting Oh, you're going to do the jumping. I'm in. <laughs> I am so in. This is going to be called a big boy boom boom. What's this guy's name? Uh, Mormonsk. I say, uh, like, I, as I guess I'm having my life force pulled out, I want to pull out the pipe. I want to pull out a vial of acid because uh, I have those. I, I bought those. Uh, and I say, this is acid. You choose what happens next, Mormon. He immediately, like, recoils from you in horror. And uh, you feel your life drain back, sort of back into you. He says, no, 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 no. Put it down. Return it to me. I pop the cork on it. And I start just, like, slowly backing out of the room, holding it over the pipe. And I just look at him and go, what a great long-term plan. Listen, we can't back through the fucking zombies, and there's poison fungus that way, Quinny. You know what? You seem to have all the good ideas. And I toss the pipe over to, over to Butthole. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it snarls and turns its attention to Butthole. I'm fine with that. I'm a boss. Am I next in the <laughs> initiative line? <laughs> uh, no, Ranger is. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm attacking. You're attacking. You're doing uh, big boy boom boom? I'm doing big boy boom boom. Okay, so roll me two d20s for your sword and your scimitar. I'm attacking the skull. <laughs> so 20 and 
19. Okay, both of those will hit. 8. 9. You feel as though uh, you, you hit soundly and you deal uh, quite a significant amount of damage. 17, to be exact. Devils in the details. <laughs> the skull looks pretty fucked up by that. Has Good. my dick taste. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> it tastes bad, but still impressive. How about this one? <laughs> uh, much the same, but slightly different. Uh, Alan. I want to try to cast Dispel Magic on the skull Kay. to see if he'll just fuck off. <laughs> oh, that's pretty smart. So that's a 24. You kind of reach out and... Uh, you never attempted this before, but you kind of really find the fundamental building blocks of the, the sorcery that summon mm-hmm. the skull. And you find those and you basically go, nope, and just scatter them. The skull goes, wait, and just turns to uh, in a sort of a burst of green flame uh, and the shattered remnants of a human skull fall out of it. Awesome. to the floor. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> well I done. Mean, I wanted that to work, but I really didn't think. Do Al- that to him. Do Al- that to the other guy. <laughs> Alan, you're crushing it. Okay, I want I want to have a conversation with you, uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. I'm Master. Really excited. I, I, Alan, you're doing so okay. good. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. So I turn to the Dark Master and I say, "Listen, I, I'm just I'm holding the conch right now. I don't want to crush this. I'd rather we were friends. This could still happen. My friend is a kleptomaniac, and he's a thief, undiagnosed. And we're gonna put air quotes around <laughs> that one. He's got problems." He doesn't always speak for the group, and he doesn't always do it smart. But you want us to go kill the spectator? The spectator. Okay. Listen, if he puts the gold back, we'll close the door. Shut up, Quinny. Don't don't give me that look you're giving me right now. What gold? If he puts back whatever the hell he took, I'm assuming gold. You can tell us what it is. Whatever. You probably know. You seem very knowledgeable. We'll put it back. We'll go kill the spectator. And then we'll get right out of your hair. Return the pipe, kill the spectator. You can keep the gold and we'll call it even. Although you do owe me a skull. Okay, listen. I, there are a lot of those. How so. about the skull of the spider? We'll, we'll slay. Wait, do you have... Oh, that's actually a pretty good sale. Uh, actually, uh, yes, that would serve my purposes quite well. All Boom right. Boom goes the dynamite. You're a really what? good negotiator. What is this like a good team? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here. His name is Ranger? Yeah, Oi. Mm. Ranger the Ranger, uh, and his two dicks are named Alan Two Dicks. Oh, yes. Formerly Gavin McLeod. (laughs) Nay, Gavin McLeod. (laughs) Exactly. So I'll give you the pipe. We get to to keep the money. We go kill this thing we were going to kill anyways. And then we're all friends. Yes. Friends. Can I I sense motive? Because that last friend made me uncomfortable. That was a little bit sexual. That's a natural 20 on my sense You get motive. the sense he's very concerned about the pipe. He is 100% legitimately ready to let you go if you do this thing for him. Oh, man. I just hand him that pipe, and I'm like, thanks, buddy. There you go. So Somebody he tells me that pipe was very tops. I, did, me- I don't know what that means, but cool. He immediately puts it back in the chest and, like, closes it. Great. So he basically points to the chamber to the north now to make good on the other half of our bargain. Banish the spectator. Yep, absolutely. Follow-up question just before we go. What did Quinny take from you? Just so we can make sure we got a nice four-way split on this one. Oh, be happy to tell you. He's opening up his little demon book. opening up my... my, His ledger? (laughs) It's my ledger, yes. This is where I keep all my evil wizardy notes. It contained uh, a bunch of copper, which he seems to have left. Hmm, I had 160 silver in here, 25 gold, and oh, five diamonds worth 100 gold each. Uh, It was 25? Why why did you say five diamonds so weird? Well, it would seem to me that uh, your kleptomaniac friend has a bad habit of miscounting the objects in his possession and telling you what they're worth. It would seem to me that what he's taken from me is worth at least 500 gold. So if there were to be a split that should occur, he should probably Ah. pay out to that effect. All right. So, Quinny, we each get a diamond. Or it's gold equivalent. Or gold equivalent. Quinny, is is this true? Well, no, it's not true, no. Uh, also, it's not happening. <laughs> what? What's not happening? Uh, you're not taking any of my stuff. I do the stuff taking. All right, well, Mr. Master, we think three of us could take out a spectator. I just want to check. You know, these are conversations that can be had. Baby <sighs> Dick is being very rude. <laughs> I care not how you divide up what you've taken from me. All I care is for results. Banish the spectator, or we shall have words. Oh, okay, so we can do this however we want. That's fine. All right, let's go get the spectator. That was nice back there. 
I'm talking, sorry, I, I, I address like the Spectre guy, like, that was nice back there. Oh, thank you. I used to do this in my day job. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'll be back. Let's just say the mine's <laughs> profits were slightly different than I often reported. So uh, you're heading... Uh, heading Gotta respect when a player's good at the game, you know? <laughs> <laughs> game recognized game. Is game that the D&D game. equivalent right now? Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, the door on the building to the north, you can feel, uh, obviously, a huge magical presence. Uh, the doors have also been partially melted. Does anybody know what the hell a spectator is? Sounds like it watches. So Probably claps. We've seen, what, a Nothic with a big eye in its face? Did Alan, have you read about these things? You want to roll me Let me check it. Let check. me see if I have. Ten total. You think it's probably within the realm of things that wizards could summon to protect a thing? It's probably wizard-based. So he's not the only uh, wizard around here? Possibly not, or he's tricking us. All right. Leading us into a trap. Well, let's go find the spectator. Maybe we can talk him into taking yeah, us to his master. Or, Fuck. honestly, if the other master's dead. Again. I never really had an interest in working with this dark master guy. We sort of just... I didn't want to fight him where he was, like, on home turf. Like, we could definitely start out a better ambush than getting caught stealing his fucking money. What the fuck was that? You were holding his fucking precious pipe. You gave me his pipe. Yeah, because you apparently had all the great ideas. No, no, I gave you the power in that negotiation. And you gave it back to him. Now I have to go get it again. No, here's here's where your faulty assumption is right at the core of this. Listen, I didn't didn't think this needed to be a fight. We were having a conversation. We're trying to negotiate with an all-powerful fucking wizard in a land full of dead people that he clearly controls through necromancy. And you decide to steal his fucking chest full of gold while he's in the goddamn room? (laughs) Quiet, quiet, quiet. I have to pee. <laughs> you need silence for that? <laughs> this episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Hamstra at EL Hamstring on Twitter, our special guest, and our DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode's sound was edited and mixed by Laura Hamstra. And Dum Dums and Dragons artwork is by Del Borovic, who can be found at delborovic.com. Our theme songs are, and now for that massive coronary, and skipping through the orchestra pit part one by Peter Gresser, and our ad music is No Control and Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. And tune in next week for more Dum Dums and and dragons.